going on people Mike C Town here welcome to the vinyl shit real quick before I get started um, I wanted to mention a podcast that I was on with some uh, really good friends of mine it's called the absolute zero podcast um, it's up now I will put a link to it in the description section down there uh, make sure you click that check it out because it's some really funny shit they talk about you know, all kinds of nerdy stuff, Star Wars, uh, video games, movies, TV shows, toys, all kinds of just really geeky shit. Um, so yeah, make sure you check that out. Um, also, I want to give a personal welcome to Rich. Uh, welcome to the VC, man. Um, I will put a link to his channel in the description section down there. Make sure you click it, watch his videos. He's into a lot of this stuff similar to me, um, but shit, man, in his first video, there's already like, I think three records that I've never even heard of, and he only talked about five. So make sure you go check his channel out. And um, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about records. First record I'm gonna show you, this is Death Heaven, Roads to Judah. Um, yep, I'm one of those guys that thinks Death Heaven's a good band. Sorry. Um, I don't give a shit what label you give them. Black metal, hipster metal, emo metal core. What the fuck ever, man. I don't care. The shit's good. All right. I really enjoy this album. This was their debut album um, outside of the EP. This was kind of like their first release. Uh, great stuff. A little more um, shoegaze post black metal stuff, if you want to call it that. Uh, I feel like if you liked Sunbather, you know, you'll like this too. The only real difference to me is the production on this record is not quite as good, and the uh, the vocals are a bit deeper. But other than that, man, it's rad. On a nice, clear vinyl. Next record I'm going to show you, this is Death Pile. Uh, the album's called GR. Don't know what that stands for. Um, I ran across this at Criminal. I saw the cover of it. I actually thought it was that Charles Bronson record. And I almost shit my pants because I don't own that. But um, it's not. Uh, I asked one of the guys there if he'd ever heard of it. One of the guys that I talk to on a regular basis who knows fucking everything, really. Um, and he wasn't familiar with this record. So he offered to throw it on. And basically, it's noise, power electronics, kind of in the vein of like White House or Genocide Organ or Grey Wolves, something like that. Um, it even has some of those same misogynistic sentiments that, uh, that Mr. Bennett did from White House. But uh, I can't lie and say musically it's not really interesting because it is. It's just not something I'd listen to on a regular basis. It's on this really cool green, I don't know if you can see that, uh, kind of like swirly kind of thing. Um, it's on Hospital Productions. They typically put out some pretty good stuff. Uh, they put out Prurient, um, Ashpool, Akitsa, stuff like that. So they're a good label. Next, we're going to show you, this is Durbla Starsh. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. I think it's Workshaw, 1997 to 2010. I don't remember where I ran across this record, but it's actually pretty rare. Um, it's limited to 500, which for Durbla Starsh, that's really, really limited. Um, it, it's like a compilation. It has tracks spanning almost their entire career. Durbla Starsh is pretty much Alvin Julius um, and whoever else he gets to work with him. Uh, if you don't know Alvin Julius, he did some stuff with, uh, with Boyd Rice, he's done some stuff with Death in June, um, he used to have a group called, uh, The Moonlight Hidden Beneath the Cloud, but this stuff, uh, Durbal Starsh began as more of like an ambient industrial, martial industrial group, um, and over time they kind of turned into almost a proper rock band. So, um, it's really cool to have this, because like I said, it spans a lot of their career, and the cool thing is... It's actually signed by Alvin Julius, if you can see that there. Um, yeah, number 351 out of 500. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked to actually own this. Next, we're going to show you, this is Dual Acceptance Rebuild. Um, this was actually a trade with uh, Count Blagrath, Sean. Um, I traded him for a Dead Reptile Shrine record that I wasn't a fan of. And I'm actually glad he liked that record because... I love this record. This is great black metal with some nice drone um, and ambient elements to it. They actually dropped something in 2014 that was pretty good. Had some um, some shoegaze elements, which 
you know, really worked out well. But um, all around, I really, really enjoyed this album. So thank you very much, Sean. Um, I don't know if I ever even told him how much I like this record. But I'm telling you now, it's fucking awesome. And thank you for the shirt as well. On this nice maroon-ish, swirl-ish color. Very cool. Next record I'm going to show you. This is The Devil's Blood Come Reap. This is a band that I got into way late. Um, I would see their cover art around and I just automatically assumed it was just some bullshit because the cover art is pretty bad. And uh, I just finally broke down one day and listened to a couple tracks and fucking fell in love with this band, man. One of my favorite records is this album called Witchcraft Destroys Minds and Reaps Souls by the band Coven. And these guys remind me of a more upbeat version of them. This is just really well done occult rock. This is one of their earlier releases. It's not my favorite, but it's still a fucking great record. Nothing too special about the insert, just a bunch more bad looking artwork. Next record I'm gonna show you, this is The Devil's Blood, The Thousand Fold Epicenter. This is probably my favorite record by them. Um, it's really fleshed out this time around, even more like Coven. You know, and it's funny, I listen to this, I listen to death metal, I listen to black metal. For some reason, this sounds way more evil than anything else. Like, the really cool occult rock stuff sounds just way more satanic. Like, I could see this being played during, like, a ritual murder more than I can something like Morbid Angel or Angel Corpse or, like, Gorgoroth. But this is a nice gatefold front cover, back cover inside cover one of the really cool things about this is it comes with this really cool book man it's like pretty thick lots of fucking creepy ass satanic satanic shit know what I'm saying scare your mama but yeah if you like old school rock and roll um, if you like old school occult rock I definitely think you should give this record a listen because it, I think it's fantastic. Uh, rest in peace, Salim. Uh, it was a very, very, very sad thing to hear about him uh, committing suicide. Next record I'm going to show you, this is Drop Dead, self-titled, one of their self-titled releases. Um, who doesn't like Drop Dead, you know? Uh, crazy, crusty, grindy, hardcore from Rhode Island. Um, these guys are just absolutely fantastic, man. If you like stuff like Spaz or Charles Bronson or Infest, this is the same vein, man. Uh, limited to 257 copies on a nice clear vinyl. Next record I'm going to show you, this is Drop Dead. This is their discography of 91 through 93. Um, so this is a bunch of, I believe, 7 inches. I could be wrong. Um, this is a really cool record because it's got a lot of their older stuff on there, so you kind of get to see how they progress. Um, this is what I love about punk rock. This is probably like 20-something songs, and the whole thing is about 30 minutes. But yeah, this is great stuff. If you can find a copy of this, I highly suggest you grabbing it if you're into, you know, crust and grind and punk and hardcore, that kind of stuff. Next record I'm going to show you, this is... End of the line. This is their self-titled release. This is another great Ebullition Records band. Uh, more crusty, screamo hardcore. Uh, has members of um, Antioch Arrow. Members of that band Heroin. Uh, shit. Members of Click Attack of Katawi. And I'm not sure. Maybe some other bands. But um, you can kind of tell. Because like when you listen to these guys, they have these, these heavy hardcore parts. They'll have these fast, crusty parts, and then they'll have like some of those weird art punk riffs that Antioch Arrow had. But um, either way, this is a fantastic record. Um, definitely one of the more glossed over bands from Ebullition. Next record I'm going to show you. This is Enslaved. Man, I'm not even going to try it, bro. Whatever that says. Um, this is the Enslaved demo pressed on wax. And Enslaved is one of my favorite black metal bands. So this is a real serious gem for me to own, but it's some really ugly and it's 
scary, scary sounding black metal. This is before they got all proggy. This is more of the raw, ugly black metal, similar to like the old school, like Hordain's Land Emperor. Um, so you can kind of see why they did a split together. But um, this in particular was later released as a split with Satyricon. I can't think of the name of it. I, I want to say it's called The Forest is My Throne. But don't get pissed off at me in the comment section if I if I misspoke. But either way, this is a fucking awesome record. Um, I'm sure it's a bootleg. I know it's not anything that's officially released. Um, it says Peaceville 2011. Uh, I don't know how much I buy that. Comes with this really cool insert. Nice pictures of the band. But yeah, if you can find this record around, I definitely suggest you grab it. It's it's really awesome. Even if you don't like New School Enslaved, I really feel like you should check this out because you might like this. Next record I'm going to show you, this is Face Candy, Waste Age, Teen Land. Uh, if you don't know, Waste Candy was an improvisational, kind of like a jazz hip-hop group. Um, it had Idea, Christoph Crane, JT Bates. I don't remember the last guy's name. Casey O'Brien. So basically what it is, it's a bunch of like improvised jazzy music with freestyling from Idea and Christoph Crane. This record is fantastic. It doesn't sound like something that would really be all that interesting if you really think about it, but trust me, it's it's awesome. Like these these two MCs, Idea and Christoph Crane, are absolutely amazing. And the the instrumentation on this is incredible. So, man, I mean, you guys know Idea. You know his abilities. So, um, no pun intended, of course. But, um, but yeah, awesome record. It came with a DVD. I haven't watched it yet because I just bought this a couple days ago. But, yeah, great music, great lyrics. I love you so much, my medicine. I love you so much, my medicine. So fucking good. So, yeah, pick this up. Rest in peace, Idea. Next right, I'm going to show you this is... Full of Hell, Rudiments of Mutilation. You like Grind? Then you'll like Full of Hell. It's really that simple, man. This is crazy, fast, spastic, grind, hardcore. Um, mixed in with some really like interesting noise parts. Um, but what I really love about these guys is they remind me of the old grind that I listened to like when I was younger. You know, they have that same attitude and aesthetic, you know? The old school, we don't give a fuck look. But yeah, I mean, if you like stuff like old Napalm Death or like Magruder Grind, you know, any of those old crust bands, I really feel like you'll, you'll dig this. It's got like that really interesting um, uh, carcass, uh, Reeker Putrefaction style cover. It's on this weird fucking sky blue, baby blue clouds type color, which is weird for a grind band. But it doesn't really matter because this is a great record. Next, we're going to show you, this is Immortal, Battles in the North. Um, this is Immortal's third album. This is one of my all-time favorite black metal bands. Um, just because they have some of the best riffs of any of those old-school black metal bands. Like, their whole aesthetic is cold, and their riffs sound cold. In my opinion, this is where they really solidified that sound. Like, the records before this... Full Moon Mysticism and Pure Holocaust. Those records are fantastic, but this is just where they really found their sound to me. And it has probably my favorite uh, Immortal song on here, which is Black Ark, Black and Mighty Raven Ark. So good. So yeah, this was a repress that uh, that Osmos did last year. I think it sold out pretty quick, but I was lucky enough to uh, get a copy of this. But yeah, here's the front cover, back cover, also has this great insert, um, lyrics, it's of course on white vinyl, white power, but yeah, if you can get it your hands on a copy of this, whether record, CD, tape, MP3, whatever, you should listen to it because it's, it's in my opinion, it's one of the best black metal records ever recorded. Absolutely incredible stuff. So that's it for this edition of The Vinyl Shit. As usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you. And I will see you guys next time. Alright? Peace, bitches.